Welcome to the Fairly Odd Cast. Unfortunately for you, for you, I'm your host. Host. Now this episode, I want to talk about a handful of broadcast network shows that were recently canceled this May, including Kevin Can Wait, The Last Man on Earth, Deception, Superior Donuts, and so many more shows. But for now, we're gonna talk about Kevin Can Wait. It feels like just yesterday you were. Different. You were my little peanut, you know. I remember you. You would fit right in here, just perfectly. Dad. Oh gosh, and then you got older, and you remember that bike I got you? And I took your training wheels off. Yeah, and then you pushed me into the street without any warning. Can you ride a bike or not? <laughs> I'm just missing one thing. I know. I wish mom was here too. She'd be very proud of you. Kevin Can Wait was canceled after two seasons and 48 episodes by CBS. Now, while I personally like the show, I know CBS had to be extremely disappointed in its ratings performance in season two. And I'm sure even in season one they were disappointed, which is why they allowed Leah Remini to join the cast in hopes of rising ratings. Now look, I like The Wife, and I like Leah Remini. So I really didn't care that Aaron Hayes was fired for the sake of the show. But it was a very fucked up situation though. And should have been handled differently. But that alone wasn't going to stop me from watching the show. And I was intrigued by how they were going to handle the situation. Handle her disappearance. Handle her absence in the series. You know and I was intrigued by Kevin's whole single father approach. And creative direction for season 2 he was talking about. But that didn't really pan out. As it was barely mentioned outside of a few episodes, the show felt lost, and even at the end of season 2, it still felt like the show didn't know what the fuck it wanted to be. Was it a workplace comedy? Is that what it wanted to be? A family comedy? It was all over the place. And you know, I liked it. I'm not hating on it, I liked the show. But I won't really miss it, now that it's cancelled. It had a lot of potential. But it really felt bored. Everyone in the cast felt bored, especially in season two. And it seems to me that this creative retooling was done with no real plan moving forward. Kevin James said he was running out of ideas. Then what the fuck happened in season two? Because there was barely, there, there really wasn't any new angles brought to the show. And I did not enjoy the monkey fist shit, the monkey fist security firm that they started. And near the end... Kevin's brother on the show, and I believe in real life, became my favorite character on the show in season 2 as he seemed to be the only fucking character being developed and progressing. And I expected a lot more from Kevin Can Wait. And it is really all his fault. He had the best chance at success for both seasons. A big bang lead in for a few weeks in season 1, but it wasn't enough. Because the show was disappointing. And people were disappointed. And then with all the publicity leading into the season 2 premiere. Plus the lead in of the special premiere of Young Sheldon. Which earned Kevin Can Wait a 2.3 rating in the 18th of 49 demo. And dipped to a 1.4 rating the next week. Because you completely fucking bombed the first episode of the season. You had all those eyes on the show. And you made one of the worst episodes of the entire series to start off the season. You had chances to make a hit show. And you failed. Both of them. Still, I like the show. And I'll watch the episodes occasionally here and there over the next few years. But there was that show was really hit and miss. It was all over the place. There were some good episodes. There were some strings of bad episodes here and there. But at the end of the day, it's no real loss because I don't think the show would have ever figured out what it wanted to be. And now, moving on to the last man on Earth. (laughs) Well, guess it's time we say our final goodbyes. The Last Man on Earth canceled at Fox after four seasons and 67 episodes. Now, I am very disappointed in the cancellation of The Last Man on Earth, and I'm going to truly miss this show. But at the end of the day, 
Last Man on Earth had so much potential that it wasted over and over and over. Like season two, the constant locking Tandy in the stocks. That shit was just unnecessary nonsense. Still, I loved the show, even when it pissed me off. And I looked forward to it every week. Every week, I looked forward to it. And I guess the series finale really is kind of fitting now in retrospect, as they aren't really the last people anymore. Now look, I love Will Forte, and I can't wait to see what he does next. But even still, without the cliffhanger, we have a lot of unanswered questions with the cancellation of this show. We never really learned all that much about the virus. And why did Todd pop lock? I mean, we know why, but why? He could have chose other things than pop locking. And does Jasper even give a shit about the group? The world may never know. Now I'm going to talk about Deception, which ran for a total of 13 episodes on ABC. Now Deception was great. I really liked it. But the season, now series finale, really pissed me off. And Deception was the highest rated 10 p.m. show on ABC for a few weeks. But I believe it was canceled solely because it was produced by Warner Brothers and not ABC Studios. So fuck you, ABC. But the ending twist on the show leaves me saying fuck Deception. And I won't spoil it for you. But now, I don't even want a second season of the show. And it was a really fun show while it lasted. But it is what it is. I'd rather have Last Man on Earth back than Deception. Next up, Superior Donuts. Now, Superior Donuts, I kind of expected to be canceled based on its ratings performance, but it was still a comedy with so much potential that really was a consistently funny and engaging series and my personal favorite CBS Monday comedy. The cast were all amazing together, and the show reminded me of one of my all-time favorite comedies, Becker, which ran from 1998 to 2004 on CBS. I'm really going to miss this one and don't expect any of the freshman comedies coming next season to top it quality wise. Maybe I'll be wrong, but I doubt it. Now I'm going to take this time out to talk about The Middle, possibly TV's most underappreciated comedy. It pulled in respectable ratings every week and barely anyone ever talked about it. It stayed consistent quality-wise throughout the entire run with no sign of seasonal rot and had some of the best continuity I think any sitcom has ever accomplished. It wasn't canceled, but officially ended with a final season. And fans knew all season long that it was going to be the last, so it's no shocker, but I do want to talk about the show. Everyone sat back and praised Modern Family the whole time. The last nine years. Meanwhile, the middle was always the superior sitcom. Fuck what you say. The middle was so full of heart and was just a rare, feel-good show that we don't get these days and I don't think we're going to get again for a long time. I can count the episodes of the middle that I don't like on one finger. And ironically, it happens to be the 100th episode of the show. I'll watch the reruns of The Middle until I die. Scorpion. Now, I wasn't a big fan of Scorpion, but it was one of the few CBS dramas I watched occasionally, along with Blue Bloods and NCIS New Orleans. But the only CBS drama I watch religiously is Bull. But Scorpion... I kind of liked, but it was never a can't-miss show for me. But its cancellation after four seasons is shocking. Apparently, CBS couldn't find a syndication deal for it and gave up on it. NCIS New Orleans was sold in December to TNT, so I have to imagine CBS has been trying for a while to find a syndication home for Scorpion. The cancellation is another big shocker due to it being owned by CBS. 
It must have been a really hard sell for syndication if CBS just gave up on it like that. Now, I won't personally really miss it, but I still think it's terrible that it not only ended on a cliffhanger, but may end up being largely forgotten before the decade's even over. Now, I want to go ahead and give an honorable mention to CBS's short-lived sitcom, Me, Myself, and I. Now, this was a show that I thought had a lot of potential, but sadly, it was oversaturated with mostly pointless plots. And while I did like the show and hoped it could survive, I can see why viewers ultimately rejected it. The cast was good, but my problems with the show was the creative direction and the plots with the whole inventor nonsense along with the goofy-ass elementary-turned-elderly crush the main character had with Eleanor. I did like the living in the garage aspect as well as the three different time period format it had going for it. And... You know, I still hope to see the remaining episodes of Me, Myself, and I at some point, but it's just another show with a lot of wasted potential. Now let's talk about a show that has not been renewed or canceled just yet. Timeless is yet to be canceled or renewed for season 3, but I personally hope that it's renewed. And I can't blame NBC if they do cancel it, since they did already bring it back once, and you assholes didn't watch it after you begged for it back. Me? I'm just grateful we got a second season, if anything, and it was a damn good season. But looking forward to next season, ABC is in some trouble. And I'm interested in seeing what they do with their Tuesday comedy block now with the cancellation of Roseanne. What will they do? What do you think they'll do? Move American Housewife to Tuesday? I mean, it is the most compatible lead-in for their freshman comedy, The Kids Are All Right, but can American Housewife really benefit from moving to Tuesday? I don't think so. I love the show. I love American Housewife. But I think it'll be best behind the Goldbergs. And maybe The Kids Are All Right can, you know, follow CBS's lead and have it start off the night, but there's still a hold in the schedule. Move Speechless or Fresh Off the Boat to Tuesday? Bench one of them? Scrap the newly formed Friday Comedy Hour? The Roseanne cancellation has put ABC in a shitty situation ratings-wise on the night. Rumblings about a spinoff of The Middle featuring Sue, but I'm not sure if it'll get a fall slot or a series order. Schooled, the Goldberg spinoff, the redeveloped Goldberg spinoff, could be shifted to lead off the night in the fall. So many possibilities, and I'm very curious to see what ABC ends up doing with their Tuesday comedy block. Also, in the 2018-19 season, will Big Bang Theory end next season? I personally don't think so, because CBS cannot afford to lose it, no matter how much it costs them. It doesn't matter. They cannot afford to lose Big Bang. And I don't see CBS getting much out of their freshman comedies from next season either. CBS clearly has no faith in Murphy Brown. Just look at the time slot. Just look at the time slot. They have more faith in their freshman comedies leading off Monday than they do having Murphy Brown leading or anchoring a Monday night time slot. They have to put it behind Big Bang, Young Sheldon, and Mom because they don't want their freshman Monday comedies to outrate their reboot. I can't believe of all shows, CBS brings back Murphy Brown. We're talking about a 1.7 in the 18 to 49 demographic at best for its season premiere before dipping every week from there. But on the bright side, I'm so glad. On the bright side of CBS comedy, that is. I'm so glad Thursday Night Football can finally stop fucking up the Thursday night schedule on CBS for the first weeks of the fall season. And one of my favorite comedies, Life in Pieces, has been benched until mid-season for that waste of a reboot that goes by the name of Murphy Brown. But I'm looking forward to This Is Us on Tuesday. I'm looking forward to American Housewife on Wednesday, if it even stays on Wednesday, thanks to the Roseanne cancellation. But I, I'm not sure ABC would, I mean, because American Housewife aired season one on Tuesday, then season two. On Wednesday, I'm not sure they'd bump it back to, to Tuesday for season three, so I'm not sure that's a real possibility. But what do you think? You know, who, what's going to fill the slot of Roseanne on the 
on the Tuesday night lineup on ABC, what do you think it's going to be? You know, but as for the new series next season, I'll be checking out Manifest on NBC, The Kids Are All Right, Single Parents, and A Million Little Things on ABC. And, you know, I'll probably give The Neighborhood on CBS a chance. Now, I can't talk about every canceled show or every show that was canceled, but I'll give mention to Lucifer because I know fans of that show were more angered than most fans of recently canceled shows. I didn't watch it. I never watched Lucifer. I've never seen an episode. I don't have an opinion on it. I don't like it, dislike it, and, you know, I have no beef with it. But I know your pain for those who did like the show. Then, on the other side, you have shows like Once Upon a Time, which I also didn't watch. But I definitely watched Lucifer before I watched Once Upon a Fucking Time. I got that shit right. You got me fucked up. But anyway, I didn't watch that either. But fans of Once Upon a Time, it seemed like they were almost happy that it was ending after a, a reportedly disastrous season. Oh, 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 shit. I, oh, my God. I can't believe I almost forgot about I cannot forget about the CBS comedy Living Biblically. Living Biblically. So many people were pissed about that one being canceled. Its ratings, I mean, they were so high. I can't believe they canceled it. Now that I got my sarcasm out of the way, I do want to uh, say something serious here. And I really would like a response to this. And what do you think? the reasoning behind this is but why the fuck do networks pick up shows like this okay like living biblically why do they pick up shows like living biblically why do they pick up shows like the mayor and past comedies like you know like last season's imaginary mary that have no fucking chance at becoming successful or even having a plan for multiple seasons just imagine a season 6 of living biblically just imagine a fucking fourth season of imaginary mary you can't because there there's not enough to make it there so why do networks bother with these shows that have very limited premises at absolutely no fucking chance at longevity. Now, you know, when I was a youngster, I checked box office numbers every Sunday just for the hell of it, but eventually I moved on to TV ratings in 2010, and back then, shows were getting 4.5s in the 1849 demo. And uh, for those that really don't know how ratings work, I'm going to go ahead and explain it to you. There's a demo, 18 to 49. So when someone tells you that your that your favorite show got a 1.1, that's the that's the rating you want to follow. You It doesn't fucking matter if it had 5 million viewers. The viewers, the total amount of viewers don't fucking matter. So, so But anyway, so, you know, in 2010, shows were getting 4.5s and 3.8s and 2.4s. I mean, I mean, not 4s, 3.4s, 2.7s, you know, big ratings. A 1.2 would have gotten you canceled. And now a network can boast and brag and promos that a show that averages a 1.2 is a new hit series. We seriously need a new way to measure who is watching what. I was almost a Nielsen home three times, and three times they sent me the $5 bills in the mail, and I sent my booklet back, and they didn't care. I got a notice talking about, we'd love for you to be a part of the Nielsen family, blah, 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 and send me $5, so I'd do it, and you know, that I didn't send it, they sent me $5, and ones, by the way, they couldn't even fucking fancy for a $5 bill, those fucking bastards, but anyway, you know. I sent my booklet back. I got nothing in return. I got another letter. I got another letter saying, "Please be a Nielsen family." So I'm like, "Oh my God, great! Here's my chance. I can, you know, they must have, you know, lost my other one. I can finally be a Nielsen family and actually contribute in the ratings, since I follow them so much and I care so much about this shit. And here's my and here's my other five dollars. I got it." Wow, so I'm writing down the, the you know, ratings. Oh, I watch, not the ratings, but I watch this at 7, and then at 8.30 I watch this on ABC, and then I might have watched this on Nickelodeon. You know, what did I watch on Nickelodeon? I was watching Pig Note Banana Cricket. So, 
I sent that book back. And I wrote the shows I watched, you know, what time and everything. I sent it back. It was, you know, it was a good book. I, you know, I wrote everything. You know, I, I, I even wrote paid programming at 3.30 a.m. Nothing. Nothing. They didn't send anything. And I never got another book. They must have been pissed I wasn't watching Good Wife or Grey's Anatomy. So I don't think they truly care who's watching what shows. They're assholes, but they pay well. But we're really at a point where ratings don't even fucking matter. International deals and series ownership and shit we don't even know about leads to low-rated shows like ABC's For the People getting renewed for a second season. We need a new system. We need a new way to follow ratings. And who's watching what shows. So now I'm going to run down a list of all the shows that were canceled by ABC, CBS, Fox, NBC, and The CW this May. Starting off with ABC, Alex Inc. Now I saw the first episode, did not like it. Then I saw, I, would, I, I don't know, the episode four, five, seven, something, I don't know. It wasn't the second or third one, I know. But terrible, awful. Shouldn't have even been picked up. Alex Inc. canceled by ABC after one season. Moving on, The Crossing. Now, The Crossing was a, air quotes, limited series, but had it done well enough, it would have been renewed. But I actually didn't mind The Crossing. I thought it was decent, at least. Um, I have not seen every episode of The Crossing, but I have been recording every episode of The Crossing because the summer's up. Well, the summer's here now, but so I'm not, you know, I'm not going to have much to watch so I said hey you know I saw like the first two episodes of the crossing I said hey I'm gonna just go ahead and save the rest of these for the summer I'm gonna watch them then so they're chilling waiting for me in the DVR but as far as the show and from what I've seen of the show it was decent uh but you know even and even the ratings they they weren't good but I may be wrong here saying this, but um, I think they probably were better than For the People. But I could be wrong here. I'm not actually looking at a list comparing the two. I probably should do that. Which, yeah, let's do that. Which one had the higher season average? So I just pulled it up. And The Crossing, let's see. Season average for The Crossing, 0 0.63. And the season average for For the People is a 0 0.63. Damn. Talk about a plot twist. But either way, with completely identical ratings, ABC decided to renew For the People instead of The Crossing. And The Crossing has been canceled after one season. Moving on, Deception. I already talked about Deception. Next show on the list, Designated Survivor, canceled after two seasons and 43 episodes by ABC. Now, I've never really seen a whole episode of Designated Survivor. I haven't even seen a half an episode of it. But I would catch the first minute or two every now and then because I watched American Housewife. And American Housewife used to come on before Designated Survivor did. Really, really incompatible lead-in. But whatever. From what I've read, from what I understand, because I've never really seen the show like that, it kind of uh, mimicked some of the same problems that Kevin Can Wait had, from what I can tell. They killed the wife uh, at some point in the show. They killed the wife. The show had went through different showrunners. Kevin Can Wait went through different showrunners. And like I said, from what I've read, it seems like the show might have had a bit of an identity crisis and it was, you know, struggling to find itself creatively. So, you know, it was canceled after two seasons by ABC. And the next show we have here is Marvels and Humans. Canceled by ABC. I don't I don't know how they expected better. They put the fucking show on Friday. So So I mean really all you can say there. Kevin probably saves the world. Canceled by ABC after one season. Never really seen the show. 
really have nothing to say about the show. Moving on. The Mayor. Cancelled after one season by ABC. This show I have some shit to say. This show was stupid. This show was really stupid. Like, who looked at this show and said, Ooh, we can get five seasons out of this? No. Not happening. And from what I've read, the show pretty much just repeated every episode was pretty much the exact same as the other one. Like I said, from what I've read, could be wrong. I've only seen like the first two episodes of that. I gave up on it quick. I was like, no. <clears throat> Fuck this show. And here we have Once Upon a Time canceled after seven seasons by ABC. But from what I've read, I've never watched the show. I think even the fans of Once Upon a Time are happy about its cancellation because I think season seven was pretty bad. And that's what the fans are saying. I'm not a fan. I don't even know. Moving on to Quantico. Quantico canceled after three seasons by ABC. Shouldn't have been renewed for season three to begin with. Scandal. We're not really going to say Scandal was canceled because, you know, Scandal kind of ended. But And last show canceled by ABC, 10 Days in the Valley. Well, I, I skipped Roseanne. Roseanne was initially renewed was canceled but 10 days in the valley awful kira sad stick no 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 now moving on to cbs cbs has canceled their freshman comedy 9jkl after one season and 16 episodes i actually didn't mind 9jkl it was decent i i you know i'm not mad or sad that it was canceled but it was a decent show while it lasted. Code Black canceled by CBS after three seasons. And I personally, I think they should have renewed it. I, I don't watch it. I don't care about it, you know, continuing or anything. But its ratings were not bad for a 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock drama. But it's well, on CBS. But its performance, even in the summer... Like on its last rating got a 0 0.7 in the summer. So I think you should have kept it CBS. But like I said, I, I don't really care either way. Kevin Can Wait. Uh, Kevin Can Wait canceled by CBS after two seasons and 48 episodes. I already talked about Kevin Can Wait. But, you know, maybe... There's some more things I can say about Kevin Can Wait, and I'll keep it short. But I, I do think it's a little ironic that Kevin went out saying that, you know, if I don't change, the, if we didn't change the direction of the show, that we, you know, I couldn't see us getting a third season. If we would have went through season two doing what we were doing in season one, then I couldn't see us getting a season three because we were just running out of ideas. Maybe maybe I should pull up the actual the actual quote. Yeah, but I think that's a little ironic that he said that this is what is going to kill a show if, if he didn't change things. And I think that actually the changes made to the show is what killed it. But it's not like the show wasn't already damaged. I mean, the show wasn't performing that well near the end of season two. I mean, season one. It was doing all right for the first half of the first season, but uh, ratings-wise. But it was not really doing all that well. So I think CBS probably went along with the change, just, you know, hoping ratings would go up. Okay, here it is. Here it is. The plot of the show didn't have enough drive. If we got through a second season, I wouldn't see us getting through a third one. We were literally just running out of ideas. Okay, and now it says now. He says, now I have to deal with my daughter in a different way, and she's going to go to college, or one's getting married, or the holidays, and it deals with things in a different, weightier way. No, it, no, it didn't, Kevin. No, the fuck it didn't, Kevin. It really didn't. I think, I think that's all I'm going to say about Kevin Can Wait. 
I, I, you know, I am, and, and somewhat, I am really kind of disappointed in the cancellation of Kevin Can Wait because even though the show was was struggling to figure out what it wanted to be, and it was weak a lot of times, it had weak episodes in season two, but I, I, I never considered dropping the show or not watching it anymore. I was always watching and just hoping it got better. And the the actual series finale episode i mean i know the last episode that was aired was the adam sandler chris rock episode but <clears throat> the last episode that was actually filmed for the season was was uh, i forgot the title of it but it was the one oh it was the fuck man it was the one with the fucking oh shit man i don't know which one was it which one was it like, oh, here it is. Here it is. It's called 47 Candles. When Vanessa says she doesn't want Kevin and the crew to do anything special for her birthday, Kevin sure is sure she's lying and plans a surprise party. Things get complicated. Vanessa has a change of heart, decides to throw a party for herself. Kevin manages to thwart that plan, but soon has another problem. He's counting on Kyle to get Vanessa to the surprise party location. That was a pretty damn good episode. And it was actually their last episode that they filmed, but it wasn't the last one aired. That episode actually aired back in March. But, uh, it's it's just, it's just kind of like, uh, man, it, it could have been so much more. It could have been so much better. And that's really all I can say about Kevin Can Wait. I, I mean, I don't think I could come up with anything else to say. About Kevin Can Wait. So what else is canceled by CBS? Living Biblically. Why was this picked up? I think it was only picked up because Johnny Galecki was on the fucking... He was the producer or some shit. He was involved somehow. I don't I don't know. I don't care. Awful. Awful show. Me, myself, and I. Already kind of talked about me, myself, and I. A lot of potential. Wasted. Gone. And another show is gone. Scorpion, canceled by CBS after four seasons. I already talked about Scorpion. Superior Donuts, canceled by CBS. I already talked about that. Thursday Night Football, moved to Fox. Thank fucking God you can stop fucking up the Thursday Night comedy block on CBS. I hated that shit. I fucking hated it. Wisdom of the Crowd, I don't, I don't know. I didn't see it. Wisdom of the Crowd, canceled by CBS after one season. I don't know if it's any good or if it was. Whatever. The CW shows canceled on the CW include Life Sentence, The Originals, and Valor. Now moving on to Fox, we have Brooklyn Nine-Nine canceled by Fox after five seasons. But then NBC came in and saved the day and brought it back for a sixth season of 13 episodes to premiere in 2019. So stay tuned for that, B99 fans. I was once a religious viewer of Brooklyn Nine-Nine, probably in the first three seasons, but I lost interest somewhere a little after the whole witness protection thing. I lost interest, and um, it's not that I don't like the show, I just kind of just stopped watching it. I don't know why, I just, I don't know, I stopped keeping up with it. The Exorcist, canceled by Fox after two seasons. Exorcist fans should honestly just be happy they got that second season because it shouldn't have been renewed. And there was no way it was getting renewed this season. The Last Man on Earth, canceled by Fox after four seasons and 67 episodes. I've already talked in great length about The Last Man on Earth, but I'm going to miss that one. Oh, I'm going to miss it. L.A. to Vegas, canceled by Fox. After one season. Lucifer. Canceled by Fox after three seasons. The Mick. Canceled by Fox after two seasons. New Girl. Ended. After seven seasons. And from what I understand. I, don't, I do not like New Girl at all. That is, that is a terrible show. But. From what, I, from, from what I know. From what I've read. From what I've been told, the show pretty much ended perfectly at the end of season six. And Fox just had to bring it back for eight more episodes. So, uh, whatever. Now, 
there's one show on Fox that has yet to be canceled or renewed, and it's definitely, most likely, for sure, gonna be canceled. But that show is Ghosted. Do you even remember Ghosted? Ghosted was, I think, a, like a paranormal investigative comedy or some shit like that. But it premiered on Fox in the fall of 2017, and it had uh, Craig Robinson, it had Adam Scott in the cast, and I was really looking forward to that. I like Adam Scott, I like Craig Robinson, oh shit, the two are together, boom, this is going to be great. But no, it ended up being just like The Odd Couple. You remember The Odd Couple? Because I liked uh, Thomas Lennon, and I liked Matthew Perry, and I liked them together in Seventeen again. But then, uh, uh, when the Odd Couple was announced, I was like, oh shit, this is going to be great. Because Thomas Lennon and Matthew Perry, this is going to be just like Seventeen again. Again. It wasn't. The Odd Couple was, was very disappointing. And so was Ghosted. Even more so than The Odd Couple. Because I, I actually watched The Odd Couple for all three seasons. But if Ghosted went for three seasons, I guarantee you I wouldn't be still watching now, it's an interesting story with Ghosted because the ratings really weren't even that bad or, or, or bad. Like, they were decent. They were decent ratings. It must be some behind-the-scenes behind drama going on there that, uh, that we're just not aware of. And we don't have, you know, the information on just yet. And hopefully one day we know because there's something went on there. Because, well, they, you know, they had ten episodes... And then they ordered six more episodes with a new showrunner, and they were changing the direction of the show, and they were, they were supposed to make it more like a workplace comedy or some shit like that. And I guess, uh, well, they had episode 10 was scheduled to air, uh, I think, in January, and that episode ended up being pulled. The show ended up, the show itself, uh, Ghosted, ended up being replaced on the schedule Sunday nights at 8.30, 7.30 Central on Fox with Brooklyn Nine-Nine on the night. So they must have been disappointed in the retool or something. I, I don't know what went on, but the show, the, sh the show being pulled for the rest of the season and effectively being canceled was not justified in its ratings performance at all. Go and look at the ratings for it. They, re they really weren't bad. And I'm not trying to advocate for the show because it, it, it was really disappointing and I'll, I don't even care about the retool. It wasn't going to get me watching again. But it's still kind of an odd situation when the show that's, you know, shows get canceled all the time, but they usually have bad ratings. Unless you're Roseanne. But Ghosted had to have some behind-the-scenes drama go on. The ratings didn't justify it being pulled and canceled. And they say they're going to air the remaining episodes sometime in the summer on Fox. I don't believe them. I do not believe them. So that's all of Fox. Let's take a look at what NBC canceled. The Brave. Canceled by NBC after one season. Great News. Canceled after two seasons by NBC. Now that show should not have been renewed to begin with. Rise. Canceled after one season by NBC. Shades of Blue. Canceled after, I think, Three seasons? Is it, hold on, it's three seasons, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, third season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, three seasons. Shades of Blue. That's the J-Lo show. Shades of Blue canceled after three seasons by NBC. Taken canceled by NBC after two seasons. Another show that shouldn't have been renewed. Thursday Night Football canceled. Well, not canceled, but um, it's moved to Fox. Just like it, it's now, it's no longer fucking up CBS's Thursday nights for the first few weeks of the season. It's no longer fucking up NBC's Thursday nights either. But I don't give a shit about NBC's Thursday nights because <clears throat> that ain't must-see TV anymore, no matter how much they want it to be. And why the fuck would I care when they have shows like Superstore and Great News and AP Bio? And Champions. Ugh. They renewed Champions for a second season. That is the biggest what the fuck renewal of the season to me. For the people. Yeah that was pretty fucking shocking that For the People got renewed. 
But I'm pretty fucking certain that it's in Shonda Rhimes' contract at ABC that every one of her uh, shows has to get renewed for season two. It's guaranteed in the contract because the catch was renewed for a second season and also should not have been renewed for a second season. But AP Bio? What the fuck? Fuck off. This has been Tripper Gidham, your host for the Fairly Odd Cast. Any thoughts about the cancellations this May or the upcoming broadcast season? What show did you like this season that got canceled? Let me know below. Goodbye now.